Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con here in person in LA 2021. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Nicholson, host, cloud host for theCUBE, and of course, former host of theCUBE, Stu Miniman, now at Red Hat. Stu, we do our normal keynote reviews. We had to have you come back. Uh, first of all, how's everything at Red Hat? John, it's phenomenal. Great to see you. Uh, nice to have Dave uh, be, be on the program here too. Uh, yeah. it's, it's been awesome. So yeah, a year and a day since I joined Red Hat and uh, I do miss you guys. Yeah. Uh, always enjoy doing the interviews in theCUBE, but you yeah. know, we're still in the community yeah, and still interacting lots. We love you Stu and Dave, Dave is your new replacement and covering the cloud angles. <laughs> He's going to bring a little Stu mojo to the interview, but Stu, we've always done uh, the, the wrap up. It's always been our favorite uh, interviews to do an analysis of the keynote because Let's face it, that's where the, all the action is. Of course, we bring the commentary. But this year, it's important because it's the first time we've had an event in two years, too. So a lot of people you know, aren't saying this on camera a lot, but they're kind of nervous, they're worried, they're weirded out. We're back in person again, what do I feel? I haven't seen people, I've been working with people online. This is the top story. Yeah, John, I, I thought they did a really good job in the keynote this morning. Normally, I mean, this community in general is good with inclusion. Part of that inclusion is, hey, what are you comfortable with? If you're remote, we still love you, and <laughs> it's okay. And if you're here in person, uh, you might see there's wristbands of green, yellow, red, as in like, hey, you okay with a handshake you want to do there, or stay the F away from me because I'm not really that comfortable yet being here, and it's whatever you're comfortable with, that's okay. I think the inclusion and the whole respect for the individual, code of conduct, CNCF and Linux Foundation has been on the front end of all those trends. I love how they're taking it to a whole nother level. David, I want to get your take too, because now with multi-cloud, we heard the same message over and over again, that hey, open wins, okay? Open wins and still changing fast. What's your take? Open absolutely wins. It's, uh, it's, it's the present, it's the future. I know in some of the conversations we've had with folks looking back over the last seven years, a lot of things have changed. Um, whenever I think of open source anything, I go back to the foundations of Linux. And I remember a time when you had to reboot a Linux server to rescan a SCSI bus to add a new storage device. <laughs> and we all sort of put our penguin hats on and kind of ignored that for a while. And, uh, and, and as things are developed, we keep coming into these new situations. Uh, Multi-cluster management was a big, a big uh, point of conversation in the keynote today. It's fascinating when you start thinking about something that was once sort of a backroom science experiment. Absolutely, it's the center of the enterprise now from a software perspective. Well, from an open source standpoint, security has been one of those front and center things. Uh, one of the day zero events that got a lot of buzz coming uh, at the beginning of the week was secure supply chain. So with the SolarWinds hacks going in there, you know, we remember cloud, oh wait, can I trust it with the security? Open source, right. now open source and security go together. Open source and, the, and security in the cloud all go together. So, you know, that, that, that wave of open source, obviously is one of the things that brought me to Red Hat. I'd had a couple of decades, you know, working with and the enterprise and open source and the, that, that adoption curve, which went through a few bumps in the road over time and it, it took time. But today, I mean, open source is a given. This show and this yeah. ecosystem are such proof points of it. A couple things I noticed. One, I want to do a shout out for the folks who put a nice tribute for Dan Connors out, who passed away. Yeah. We miss him. We uh, saw he was on theCUBE 2019, I believe he was on theCUBE that year with Adam on. Uh, big influence. But the inclusiveness too and the community is changing. And I think security has changed a lot. And I want to get your guys take on this. Security has forced a lot of things to happen faster. Data, open data, okay, and Kubernetes to get hardened faster. Stu, I know your team's working on it. We know what Azure and Amazon's working on it. What do you guys think about how security has been forcing the advances in Kubernetes and making that stable. Yeah, so uh, John, security you know, is job one. It is everyone's responsibility. We talk about it from a container and Kubernetes standpoint. We think we have a relatively good handle uh, on what's happening in the Kubernetes space. Red Hat, we made an acquisition earlier this year of Stackrox, uh, which is one, one of the leading Kubernetes native security pieces, but you know, John, we know security isn't just a moat anymore and a wall that you put up. It's every single piece you need to think about it. Um, I, I've got a, a person from the Stackrox uh, acquisition actually on my team now and have told him like, hey, you need to cross train all of us. We need to understand this more from a marketing standpoint. We need to talk about it. From a developer standpoint, we need to have consideration of it. It's no longer, hey, it works okay on my machine. Come on, it needs to go to production. We all know this. Shift left is something we've been talking about yeah. for many years. So yes, security, security, security. We can't 
cannot overemphasize how important it is. Um, you know, when it comes to Kubernetes, John, I think you know we're relatively mature. We're crossing the chasm. The adoption yeah. numbers are there, yeah. so it's not an impediment anymore. It's totally next level. I do I agree with you, Stu. David, I get your thoughts on this whole. Um, adoption um, roadmap that put it together, one of the working groups that we interviewed has got that kind of navigation, kind of like trailheads for Salesforce. But that speaks to the adoption by mainstream enterprises, not the hardcore, you know, us DevOps guys, but like right. it goes into mainstream, main, main street enterprise, had IT departments and security groups. They're like, we got to program faster. How do you see the cloud guys and this ecosystem competing and making that go faster? So it's been interesting over the last decade or more, often, technology has been ahead of people's comfort level with that technology, for obvious reasons. It's not just, oh, something went wrong, it's, oh, something went wrong, I lost my job, really, really bad things happened. So we tend to be conservative, rightfully so. Um, in the, you know, sometimes there are these seminal moments where a shift happens. Uh, go back, sort of analogous, go back to a time when people's main concern with VMware was, how can I get support from Microsoft? And all of a sudden, it went from that within weeks to how can I deploy this in my enterprise very, very quickly. And I'm fascinated by this concept of locking down the supply chain of code. Uh, sort of analogous to HTTPS, you know, secure HTTP. It's the idea of making sure that these blocks of code are validated and secure as they get implemented. You mentioned, you mentioned things like cluster and pod security and infrastructure security. Well, well, Dave, you brought up a really good point. So GitOps is the instantiation of that. How can I have my infrastructure as code? How can I make sure that I don't have drift? It's because, hey, I could just, it'll live in GitHub and therefore it's version controlled. If I try to do something, it will validate that it's there and keep me on version because we know, I mean, John, we talked about it for years on theCUBE. We've gone beyond human scale. If I don't build automation into right. it, if I yeah. don't have the guardrails in place because humans will mess things up. So we need to make sure that we have the processes and the automation in place and Kubernetes was built for that. It's automation at its core, putting in, we've seen GitOps, uh, the, the Argo CD was yeah. only went gradually Graduated, you know, the 1.0 uh, was supported at KubeCon Europe earlier this year. We already had a number of our customers deploying it, using it, talking publicly yes, about it. Stu, I want to get the GitOps angle in. That's a good, good call out there. And, and mainly because when we were on the Cube, when you were a Cube host with, uh, with us, we were always cheerleading for Kubernetes. We love because we've been here every single KubeCon. We were the one saying, "This is going to be big. Trust us." And it is. It happens too. So, but now we've been kind of. We don't have to sell it anymore. We don't. I mean, not that we're selling it, but like we don't have to be a proponent of something we knew was going to happen. It happened. You're now work for a vendor, Red Hat. You talk to customers. Yeah. What does that next level conversation look like? Because now that they know it's real, that they have to do it. How is the GitOps and the modern application software development changing? What are your observations? Can you share with us from a Red Hat perspective as someone who's talking to customers, you know, what does real look like? Yeah, so, so right, GitOps is a great example of that. So, you know, certain of our, you know, government agencies that we work with, you know, obviously very secured about, you know, we want zero trust, who do we put in charge of things? So, if they can have, you know, that, that source of truth and know that that is maintained and locked down and not, oh wait, some admin's going to mess something up on us, uh, either maliciously or, oops, uh, by accident or anything in between. That's why they were pushing uh, th that adoption of that kind of technology. So, you know, absolutely, they, for the most part, John, they don't want to have to think about the infrastructure piece anymore. What do developers want? The old PaaS days was, I want to be able to you know, write once, deploy anywhere, live anywhere. Containers helps that a little bit. Uh, we even have in the container space now, you can, you can use a serverless deployment model with you know, Knatives, the big open source project that you know, VMware ourselves uh, are working on, Google's involved in it. So you know, having us be able to focus on the business and not you know, running the plumbing yeah. anymore. Is, that's exactly it, that's piece. exactly it. That's what we're so psyched for. Okay guys, let's wrap this up and, and review the keynote. Dave, we'll start with you. What'd you think of the keynote? What were the highlights? what did you take away from the today's keynote? So you touched on a couple of things. Uh, uh, inclusion from all sorts of different angles. Really impressive. Uh, this sort of easing back into the world of being face to face. Uh, I think they're doing a fantastic job at that. The thing that struck me was something I mentioned earlier. Um, moving into multi-cluster management in a way that really speaks to enterprise deployments and the complexity of enterprise deployments moving forward. It's not just, it's not just, 
I'm a developer, I'm using resources in the cloud, I'm doing things this way, the rest of the enterprise is doing it a legacy way, it's really an acknowledgement that these things are coming together increasingly. That's what really struck me. Stu, what's your takeaway from the uh, yeah, So, so the, the, there's been a discussion in the industry, you know, what do the next million cloud customers look like? We've crossed the chasm on Kubernetes. One of the things they announced in the keynote is they have a new associate level certification. Because I, I tell you, I, before the keynote, I stopped by the breakfast area, sat at a table, talked to a couple people. One guy was like, hey, I've I'm, I'm been on Amazon for a bunch of years, but I'm a Kubernetes newbie. I'm here to learn about that. It's not the same person that five years ago was like, I'm going to grab all these projects and pull them down from Git and build my stack and you know, have a platform team to manage it. From a Red Hat standpoint, we're delivering our biggest growth areas in cloud services where, hey, I've got an SRE team. They can manage all that because can you do it? Sure, you got people, maybe you'll hire them, but wouldn't you rather have them work on you know, that security initiative or that new application or some of these pieces? So, you know, what can you shift to your vendor? Uh, what can you offload from your team? Because yeah. we know the only constant is that yeah. things are going there's gonna, always going to be new pieces, and I don't want to have to look at, oh, there's another 20 new projects, and how does that fit? Can I have a partner or a consultant, an SI, that can help me integrate yeah. that into my environment when it makes sense for me? Because otherwise, oh my God, cloud, so much innovation, how do I grasp what I want? Great stuff, guys. I would just say my summary is that I'm excited this community has broken through the pandemic and survived and thrived. People were working together during the pandemic. It's like a VIP event here. So the, my keynote epiphany was, this is like the who's who. Some big players are here. I saw Bill Vass from Amazon on the, on the ground floor on Monday night. He's number two at AWS. I saw some top VCs here. Microsoft, IBM, Red Hat. Yeah, John, all, the whole way track's back. The whole way track is back. And, and it's a hybrid event. So I think we're here for the long haul with hybrid events where you can see a lot more in-person, uh, VIP-like vibe. People are doing deals. It feels alive, Stu, and it's all open, so it's all cool. And again, the team at CNCF, they do an exceptional job of inclusion and making people feel safe and cool. So, great job. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Absolutely. Good stuff. Okay, the keynote review, here from theCUBE. Stu Miniman, shop for Dave Nicholson. Thanks for watching.